beautiful day. Yeah. I can believe it. I got up in the morning and the sun was out and no rain. I know. I haven't seen that for days. That's right. First of all, my name is Richard. Say hello, Richard. Hey, Richard. Where are you from? Florida. Florida? Yep. Very good. What part of Florida? Fort Myers. Oh, ah, okay. Can you get your picture taken? That way you can prove you were here with me. Alright, you're riding in a 1921 Model T. They started building Model Ts in 1908. They discontinued them in 1927. So that meant they were in production for 19 years. And in those 19 years, they made over 15 million of these cars. Now, Model Ts, when they first came out, were $850. Back in 1908, that was a tremendous amount of money. And the one thing you couldn't do back then was you couldn't borrow it. No such thing as an automobile loan or leasing or financing or any of that sort of stuff back then. I'm assuming you don't know anything about the village, right? No, I've been here. Huh? I've been here before. Oh, you've been here before, okay. Well, let's just talk about the car. Yeah, there was $850. Now, Henry didn't like the idea that the price is so high because he knew he wasn't going to be able to sell that many vehicles. And the one thing about $850 back then is you couldn't borrow it. No such thing as an automobile loan or leasing or financing or any of that sort of stuff back then. Henry didn't like the idea that the price is so high, like I say, because he knew he wasn't going to be able to sell that many cars. So he decided that every year that he made a profit, he would start lowering the price of the car. By 1914, he managed to get the price of $850. Boy, that looks hard. I'm glad I'm not I'm doing that. <laughs> yeah, Henry kept trying to get the price down as low as he could. Every time he made a profit, he would start lowering the price of the car. By 1914, he managed to get the price all the way down from $850 down to $500. The reason he was able to do that is because that was the year he put the assembly line into effect. What the assembly line did for Henry was it increased his production six times what it had been before. Prior to the assembly line, it took 12 hours to put a car together. After the assembly line, they could do it in two hours. That's amazing. Wow. Now, 1914 was also a big year in Ford history because that was the year they started paying the $5 a day wage. The average salary in the United States back then was $2.30 a day. So Henry wanted to pay his employees more than double that. Why did he want to do that when he didn't have to? Nobody was forcing him to? Well, he said, first of all, he wanted to do it because he felt he wanted to create a better relationship between himself and his employees. Money will do that. You want somebody to like you? Double their salary. They will like you for some time. Try to keep you healthy, make sure you're eating right, and everything. Um, yeah, Henry had a problem earlier in his career because what happened, what he, what would happen is a lot of times people would hire into his factories and then quit after a year. Right. Um, the reason they would quit is because there was so much stress in his factories. They would go to someplace else who was paying a comparable amount of money, and a lot less stress, okay? So Henry figured if he doubled their salaries, they would stay. And he would have a consistent workforce that he could count on all the time, okay? And that's what he wanted. And by doubling their salaries, that's what happened, okay? And the other reason he wanted to pay all these people this extra cash is because he knew a lot of these people would, 
go out and buy Model T cars with it. All right. Which they did do. So his sales did go up. Now, Model T's have a four-cylinder engine in it, like a lot of our cars do today. It's very, very large. It's 2.8 liter, 178 cubic inches. It's huge for a four-cylinder engine. But even though it's a very, very large motor, it only developed 20 horsepower. But with that 20 horsepower, they said this car could do 40 miles an hour. Well, probably it could do 40 miles an hour because this car only weighs 1,200 pounds. All right. It's a very, very light car. Um, you didn't want to be doing 40 miles an hour back then. Uh, you had very bad roads. Uh, but everybody says, well, our roads today are very bad, too. Well, there's a difference between all the roads being bad back then yeah. and some of the roads being bad now. Although I think we're getting from some to all nowadays, too. I think oh, yeah. oh, I don't oh, yeah. see our roads improving that much. Especially in Michigan. I don't know how they are in Florida. It's but it was a shock. In Michigan. Driving up 75 was a shock. Oh, yeah. I can imagine it was, yeah. You guys don't have the same freeze thought that no. we do. No. Anyway, uh, the other reason you don't want to do 40 miles an hour is simply because of the tires and tubes on these cars. Right. The tires and tubes on these cars are very bad, very weak. And as a result, uh, uh, you know, flat tires and blowouts were very common back then. Of course, I told one lady, I says, I remember when I was learning to drive back in the 1950s. Yeah. I'm that old. You know, I was learning to drive in the 1950s. Flats and, black, flats and blowouts were very common back right. then, too. Oh, yeah. It wasn't un unusual to look out your front window of your house and see your car sitting at a, a strange angle, you know. <laughs> then you knew you were in trouble. You had to fuck, fix the flat. Okay, there we go. Well, thanks a lot. Well, it's my pleasure. You have a great day. Thank you. How long are you in this area? Uh, just today. Just today? Yeah. Okay. Thank Have a you. good day. This way, sir.